Hello everyone. Hello once again. Thanks for stopping in if you're new here. Alright, for now, please hit the red button below so you will not miss out on any new updates on the sort of short stories, the poems, the set text, um, the plays that are needed for the CSEC examinations. Today we're looking at Polly Marsh's Marshall's Todado in Memoriam. Welcome to Max Easy Lessons once more. If you are returning, thanks for coming back again. If you are new, as I said, please hit the bell button, hit the subscription button so that you won't miss out on any of the lessons to be learned right before the exams. Now let's start with the title of the short story. The title Dadu, the name Dadu, may be given as a pet name, may have been given as a pet name to the old lady in her family, for the family. In the story, the sound of the name makes the narrator thinks of the thunder fading softly in the distance. Now, in the past, the family was an important element in the society, and the grandparents, in particular, were the strength, were almost like the backbone of each family, and every grandchild would respect the grandparents to, an, to a great extent because what we know of the Caribbean setting is that grandparents often took care of the children when the mothers and fathers have to leave to go overseas to work or whatever it is. Grandparents are played, actually, not are, grandparents played an integral role in the lives of these kids. And therefore, the kids adopted an attitude towards the grandparents that was almost reverent was almost reverent and they were actually in awe of their grandparents additionally in memoriam is from the latin term which speaks to in memory of a dead person so right away we look at the title of it and we know or we assume that the grandmother has died in some cultures dadu is actually the name given to the grandparent in the home. So right away we know that the story is a tribute to the memory of the writer's grandmother, and that is Polly Marshall, whose parents were Barbadians or Bayesians, as she herself stated. Now before we get into the plot, let's look at the setting. The year is 1937, and we know this from paragraph 11. We're taken from the disembarkment shed at the port of Bridgetown, which is actually the capital of Barbados, and we go right into Dadu's home in the parish of St. Thomas. Now, in this section of the country, there was board and shingle houses, which adjoins the orchard or fruit trees, her grandmother's cane piece, and a thickly wooded gully. Much of the story that we read here focus on the relationship between the nine-year-old narrator from New York and her Bayesian grandmother, Dadu. And we sense the tension between them from the start. We see that there is some kind of tension between the grandmother and the little girl at the start of it. And we see that in spite of the strange attraction which keeps them together a lot of the time, there is this stubbornness in both of them that allows them not to want to accept the other's point of view. Now let's look at the plot. The narrator recalls accompanying her grandmother and older sister to a visit from New York to her maternal grandmother in Barbados in the 1930s. Now, we realize that the nine-year-old is caught up in the contradictions of the old woman. She believes the old woman is immediately threatened by the fierce little girl who outsteers her. Nonetheless, Dado holds her hand for comfort in the truck which takes them from the port to their home and she is convinced that she can persuade the nine-year-old of the wonders of the natural surroundings if they just walked through the orchard and came peace with her at every chance that she gets. Now, Dadu is a strong woman. She is stubborn and she therefore dares the child to match her. Now, this child is from the city and the delights of her fruit trees and cane peas stand as the pride of Dadu. And she becomes upset because this little city girl does not appreciate her rich riches, her, 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 her treasures in her agricultural produce. Moving into the densely wooded, wooded gully that seemed peaceful yet gripped in the valley and struggle for the sunlight, the conflict continues. The child admits that there are little or no trees in New York, but she also takes the opportunity to boast about the snow, the snow that they experienced. So we're seeing a clash of culture right here between the child and the grandmother. 
Now the child plays on this snow because for her, this is her richness. For Dadu, her richness lies in the cane piece at the orchard. For the little granddaughter, she knows that Dadu is not familiar with the snow and therefore it would disturb her lifestyle based on what she is seeing in Barbados. Now without pausing, the little girl perform, performs the latest American dances and song for her shocked grandmother, who eventually gives her a coin for sweets and appears to be giving up the comfort to change this little girl. After this, Dadu seems increasingly curious about New York, although it is clear that the strange man-made wonders that the little girl described are a bit scary to her. Dadu is disturbed at what the world is coming to when she hears her grandmother responding violently to an insult from a white schoolmate. Now with all of this, and because of the differences in culture, Dadu still makes a final attempt to win the contest by revealing a magnificent royal palm that grows above the trees in the gully. For Dadu, this is the highest point. Nothing could be possibly taller than this, but for the little granddaughter, New York and its skyscrapers, well, they were absolutely no match for the tree that Dadu showed her. The narrator is now not willing to disappoint her grandmother at this point because she realizes that her grandmother wants to show her the beauty and the treasure of Barbados. And so she points out many buildings that are many times taller, and she points to the fact that the Empire State Building is much taller even than Bissek Hill, which is supposed to be the second highest point in Barbados. Now, to appease her grandmother, she promises to send a picture postcard of the proof, but Dadu is defeated. She knows that Barbados can never be compared to the city life of New York. She turns away shocked while her granddaughter feels some amount of triumph, but at the same time, she is sad because she realizes that she has outdone her grandmother. We see that Dadu's spirit become broken and she becomes weak after this. She is no longer enthused about her, about her cane fields and when the narrator is ready to leave for New York, she asks her granddaughter, who is the narrator, to send the promised postcard so that she could see for herself what New, like, New York looks like and what these buildings would look like. But she does not ever see the picture because she dies with a noise in her ears, in her ears, of the terrifying British aircraft helping to end a riot after the 1937 labor strike. The narrator here, she points out that as a young adult artist, she now finds the need to show penitence for the wrong she has done by painting Dado's tropical trees. The wrong for her here is that she went across the boundaries in her mind and she shattered the hopes of an old woman who simply wanted to make her granddaughter happy and make her granddaughter realize the beauty of her native home. The conflict here lies in the struggle between Dadu and her granddaughter and this is resolved in Dadu's defeat. Ironically though, the granddaughter's victory is not really a victory for her because she becomes sad. She is remorseful and she believes that she has contributed to the quenching of Dadu's pride in the country and the nature that she loves. Moving on to the characters in the short story. There are only two main characters in this short story. One is the narrator and the other is Dadu. The narrator remembers the time when she was nine years old and she came from Brooklyn to visit her grandmother in Barbados for the first time. Now, while Dadu approves of her older sister, the pretty one, she is visibly put off by the fierce look of the narrator. Now, the narrator had this stubborn streak that if you really read the story, you'll realize that, yes, Dadu is related to the narrator because they have that same kind of pride and that same kind of stubbornness that would perhaps lead the little girl to the fierce look that Dadu fears. No, she is a grandmother. She's a granddaughter. The narrator is a granddaughter whom Dadu clings to in the truck and shows around her the property, shows her around the property every single day. The strange contest that exists between them is one that contrasts the advantages of the island and those of the foreign city. The narrator, of course, feels guilt when she sees her grandmother has become disturbed and distressed by the fact that she can boast of what is happening in New York. 
Now at the end, we see the adult narrator trying to make things up because she knows that she had hurt her grandmother's pride a long time ago. And so she paints the palm trees as a reminder and in tribute to her grandmother. Dadu is a second character. She is more than 80 years old. She's black. She's from the West Indies. In fact, she's from Barbados. She prefers that her children are light-skinned because at the time that the story was written, there was always and there was a strong presence of racial conflict and racial dominance in the society. So it was no surprise that Dadu would have preferred the light-skinned kids. Now, is this wrong or right? Well, society does influence the way that we look at things and therefore Dadu's thoughts and ideas were perhaps as a result of whatever was happening in the in the country at the time Just now as a product of the colonial society we understand that dadu cannot imagine her grand black her black granddaughter sorry fighting with a white schoolmate because again whites were supreme whites had dominance in the caribbean for so many years during slavery and in the 1930s people still had not gotten past the whole idea that whites were better than the blacks is this wrong or right well that's not for us to decide whether it was wrong or right truth is that it was an occurrence there and so it wasn't a shock then if you know the history of the west indies and the, the reverence that is held for white people back in those days you would have understood why dadu couldn't wrap her hands around the challenge that her black granddaughter would go up against a white child she finally loses her will to fight dadu finally loses her will to fight and she withdraws into a weakened and confused state she dies not very long after her granddaughter's return to new york and is seen as a victim of the assault of her world by the monstrous destructive aircraft from the british the same whites that she held reverence for that was brought in the aircraft that was brought in to quell the riot that followed the labor strike in 1939 now, along with your teacher's help and guidance, these are just some of the themes that you can explore in the short story. There is pride, there is stubbornness, there is man-made versus natural environment, there is remorse, there is the challenge that women faces, or the challenges that women face. The style is very simple. There is a sense of realism in the story. And we realize that the narrator, the child, insists on defending her city, and we also see that there is a realistic side of the grandmother whose, whose stubborn pride does not allow her to accept that New York is better than her Caribbean island. The point of view is a first-person narrator. It is an adult recalling her experiences from her childhood. She clearly recalls her first impressions of Barbados and of her grandmother and the reactions that she has to both Barbados and her memories of New York when she is in Barbados. We also see the struggles between Dadu and herself, and Dadu admitting to the discomfort she sometimes felt on gaining the upper hand. Taking some responsibilities for Dadu's depression at the end, the narrator, she goes ahead and she does penance by painting the whole idea of the Caribbean setting that Dadu had dwelled so much on. Now, these are just some notes on the short story there is more that you can do through research there is more that you can do by way of questioning your teachers and talking and discussing with your classmates thank you so much for stopping by um, these are just some few ideas people hit the subscribe button um, hit the bell button for notification on any new video that is uploaded and if you are returning please remember to keep your bells on keep that bell notification on so that you will see the quick and speedy uploads before the end of this week. Thank you so much for watching.